So I want to do a quick video to talk about the standard push button, illuminated push button with terminal blocks. This is something that I think guys in industry often um, take for granted that guys not in industry don't understand necessarily how all this works. And this is a standard Allen Br uh, Bradley push button. Um, it's illuminated. It's outside the box because I want to take it apart and show you the different aspects of what's involved here. But typically, the nice thing about a standard push button is A, this will mount into a standard um, hole for any type, a knockout hole for any type of a standard box. It also is lit up so it saves you space because you can run power to one side. In this case, this is saying I need a 120 volts. Um, this is saying that I need a 120 volt, uh, this is a 120 volt socket with this type of frequency range. So that's a dead giveaway. This AC, it would say VDC if it was DC. It gives you a lamp replacement and it gives you the part number. So you can go right in line and figure out all the things that you need. But a couple things to keep in mind is if I was to mount this into a box, I would first need to unscrew the, the indicator. So this is a red indicator and you can see the light bulb is in here. That just comes out by just pushing and you'll see it has a like nice little bayonet, uh, a bayonet base because that'll allow you to push and turn. You can see that in there. So if I just push in and turn, I, it's kind of idiot proof to let you sign in but you'll notice too that there's notches along the inside here this is to make sure that if you mount this without it it may end up being turning around and if you turn things around that could loosen wires up and if loose wires with hot you know with that's hot kind of come in contact you could cause a short so this is a is a is a ring that you can that usually you can tighten down onto um, your box, and sometimes there's like um, uh, gaskets and other things in there to help keep water tight or keep moisture from accumulating. But if I unscrew this, you'll see a, a ring here that has one two little little notch little um, dog ears sticking out, and another one sticking out right here. This is so that this will come in contact with with the standard um, knockout, and this will come in, will line up with these holes here on the side here that will keep it from turning. So this will you can see if I push this in here like this um, and push it down, you can see it slides nicely right in these holes, and you can see this one sticking out so that if this is providing pressure from the box, this won't turn on anything. So it'll stay stationary, which is a good thing. So this is on the front side. This is what sticks up out of the box, and this is what allows you to push. And if you notice, the bulb doesn't get pushed, just this black, black part right here. Because if I screw this back on, it's only screwing on the black, and the bulb will stay stationary. So this is my push button, and notice it's electrically isolated from the, the light bulb itself. And we know that by, by looking on the back end. The nice thing about most switches, and I'm going to take this apart, it's a matter of just unscrewing these two little uh, mounting screws. And this is made in a way so it's kind of idiot proof. They'll only go on one way. But if I'm out in industry and one of these contact blocks go bad, I only have to replace a contact block. I don't have to replace the whole switching mechanism. So... So I'll take these out. I know, riveting TV. But you can see both of these slide out. And on the back side, you can see my push button kind of just that stick out this little white portion. That's what's going to actuate the, 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 the contact blocks. And I got my positive, my, my, my positive in line and neutral for my light bulb sitting right here. And if you look on the flip side of the contact blocks, you'll see a little bu plunger that will go in and change the contacts. And, if, and, it will, and you can see in here, going between one contact to another as I push in on the normally closed contact to the normally open contact. You see that how it's coming in contact. And then here is my base for my light bulb. And you can see, the, as I said earlier, the one 240, uh, 120 volts and everything. But you can see how it's made to, set, to fit together a certain way. So if I try to put it in there and it doesn't work, you know, if I try to, you know, flip it around, it's only it's only going to work one way. 
it's only going to work one way and it will come in contact right there and sit perfectly for the two placement screw holes to come through and for me to actually it properly onto the switch this is a little harder to do when you're kind of trying to film but you can see that it only will go in one way if i flip it around and don't put it on right it's not gonna fit these two little holes here uh, these two little dog ears here are making it so that the contact block will always appear on the right side um, but i do want to break apart and look at the contact block a little bit more carefully now this is set up to be normally open and normally closed. So if I run a wire to this wire here and this and this terminal here and this terminal here, if there was screws and clamps there, it would energize, it would run power through it if the switch is de-energized. Once I energize the switch, you can see the little, if you look really closely in there, you can see the two little metal plates on the inside go from the top bits of contacts to the bottom bits of contacts so if you are doing a, a terminal block you got to make sure because some terminal blocks will run normally close over here and normally and open over here or across you just got to look and know what type of terminal block you're using so i have a normally closed side normally open side you also need to make sure that if your plan is calling for normally ocean normally open uh contacts that you wire to the right contact and you'll see a one, and if you look closely here, you see a one, a two, a three, and a four. And you can see the four kind of right there. Let me see if I can get that. Um, yep, the four is right over here in the corner. Because if I'm doing a, a diagram, I'll label it uh, one, two, or three, four, based upon it being normally open or normally closed. Um, and you can see the IEC number, you can see the IEC codes and etc. But so, when things go bad, you know, if I, if I put an ohm meter across here, I should read zero because it should have 100% uh, uh, continuity through there. And if, if, uh, if I energize the switch with the ohm, the ohm meter here, it should read uh, overload or infinity. And the opposite's true for these normally uh, open contacts right here. Again, this, we're doing this with a relay because relays have similar, but notice that these are not relay, these are not like relay contacts in a sense that a coil actuates them. It requires a human to actuate them. And so if I want to put everything back together, and the same is true, so if this base goes bad, I can just replace it. And notice that, that if you look closely here, It doesn't have a, uh, a clear which is the neutral and which is the ground. Um, you may consult the tech documents, but it's pretty uh, pokey okey, uh, idiot proof here. But this is your standard illuminated push button, at least from Alan, from the, uh, Alan Bradley uh, is concerned. Um, different manufacturers may have different flavors, but all of them have the basic understanding that there's contacts here that are normally open, normally closed. Um, and if you need it to illuminate, there's usually a different contact block to do that. Now, notice they're electronically isolated. And so if a push button, now this is a contact block from a smaller push button setup, and you can see the three to the four. That's a fairly standard, you know, notification when it comes to that, you know, three, four contact is the normally open. One, two is the normally closed side for these contact blocks. But this is another contact block. Here's a switch. You can't see it. This one's actually bad, but it actually, you know, if you look carefully, you can just solder in on these terminal poles right here, depending on which one's the right, the, the normally open and which one's the normally closed. Um, yep, three and four, normally. And you can see it's right there, normally open, three and four. So this might be a double pole. I would need to consult the tech documents because sometimes these don't always, um, I'm not sure how this is set up. I would have to go back and check um, the tech documents. I just had this on my office, in my office from another, but this is another example of a terminal block that you would probably have to solder the wire connections on with. So, um, for that, for a switch. So, and as I said, I just kind of put this together really fast, just tighten down these two holding screws to make sure things come together. And if I want to put this all back on to my, put this onto my box, I would, if I want to put this back in my box, pretending this is my box, I would slide this through the back here. I would then put this this holding ring on through 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 here to, to put it into place. I would then lock it down with this locking nut. 
making sure that I have any washers to help make up the offset in space. And then at the very end, I would put it, push on the push button. That is your standard illuminated push button. I hope that was helpful, um, and I hope you have a good day.